in. So, obviously we talked about interference this morning. What we're going to go through now is anti-brushing the hind shoe. Okay, lots of different variations we could do. Okay, um, however, we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to show it as if what we're going to deal with is a hunter horse which is brushing obviously on the hind foot. Okay, and what we're going to go through is how we're going to measure and work out what we're doing. So let's say, for instance, this is the lateral side of the foot. Okay, so this is the medial side. And what we've established is when it does brush, it's brushing anywhere from the heel quarter to just in front of it. Okay, so we need to make this the safe zone. However, that doesn't mean that after the quarter we want to come out. Remember, it is hunting and depends on the dynamic motion of the horse, it could still further brush around there. But we have got to support the foot. So it's about compromising. It's about doing what we can. Sometimes if we get a horse which is brushing more at the hill, we'll fit the shoe normal to just before the quarter and then we'll sh shoe it, and I don't like to use the word, but tight, so we've got an overhang of foot. Okay, it's a necessary evil. It's not how we shoe horses, certainly not in the um, in modern days. But you know, if it's a compromise between the horse actually being able to work and not cause an injury, so it's about compromise. You know, and compromise means giving up on some of the support. So what we're going to do? I've already worked out the measurements, but just to let you know how I got there. So we've got a foot here. This foot is four and three quarters by five and a half, okay? Normally, there's a quarter of an inch difference between width and length, okay? In this case, there's three quarters of an inch. So, on a normal circumstance, that means it's half an inch longer than it should be, okay? So all we're gonna do, we're gonna add the width, the length together. We're gonna add that extra half an inch because we'll need it to get to the heel. And for a hunter hind, I would normally add an inch and a quarter. So I've come up with 12 inches. We are gonna fold up the concave and we're gonna run it up a bit on the inside so we will grow some more. Okay, so then. The key thing when we're trying to make these preventer shoes and where most people do go wrong is the fact they don't put the correct shape into the shoe. Remember, it's an irregular shape. It's not the normal flowing shape that we are used to seeing. It's got to fit a particular way. If, for example, you hand in an anti-brushing shoe, um, for either as MVQ or as a diploma board shoe, if it's just a normal flowing shape with the edge knocked off it, then that shoe's going to fail because you've shown that you have no idea what that shoe's supposed to be doing. Okay, so it's important we get the shape right. The easiest way to check these shapes is to actually check it on, on a real horse's foot to see how it fit. Obviously, I've not got a real horse here, but I've got a foot shape. If you've got a foot shape, great. Failing that, what you can do is find a... Um, I'm trying to think through the word. A relevant machine-made shoe, hind, and then place your shoe on top of the machine made shoe and it should be tighter in, in the given area. Okay, and that's really important. Okay, so for example, our normal toe bend, we'd have our normal balanced toe bend following that foot shape around, albeit a little bit underneath. Okay, however, this shoe, we're gonna want to come pretty much straight, a lot straighter between the center of the toe to the quarter. Okay, and then we're gonna follow the radius around, albeit with an extreme brushing edge on it. Okay, so that's really important. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna mark this, like I said, do you remember which one's gonna be the lateral hill? It's really important, you don't wanna be making the wrong side on a job like this. 
And again, obviously we always mark off center. So we've got a shorter inside branch, but because we're gonna run it up and forge it quite a lot, we're gonna gain some more. So, and because like I say, we're coming underneath the foot, we're taking a shortcut. So I'm actually gonna mark this a whole quarter of an inch off center. Again, just to get the dividers. Again, we still need some tips. We still need some tips to know where to put our tobin in the right place. So all I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna mark on where my toenail is gonna go. Obviously I won't be putting a toenail on the inside, so I'm just gonna put one on the outside as a guide. So that's my lateral toenail. Incidentally, where we're cutting under the foot, that means we're only gonna be able to put a couple of nails really, really far back, but extremely far back behind the quarter. So obviously we know, further back we nail, the more restriction we're gonna to do to the function of the foot, and also the more likely we are to stab the horse. Okay, so the nails we do put in, and again, this is where you see a lot of apprentices get this wrong, is when they still stamp the nail hole in the center of the section. Well, you're gonna go right through the sole. So you've got, actually got, when we go on about nails being too coarse or too fine, we are looking at very far back, fine nails. In a lot of cases, so a foot this big, I'd normally nail on with a three slim. You're probably gonna to have to stitch that on with a two slim or a three slim, because it is so far back. So very delicate nailing. One thing that will do is that will mean I'll probably put four nails on the outside as opposed to three to give a bit more stability. And what a lot of people used to do and still can do, although you don't see it so much these days because I think people forget, is obviously we'll have a toe clip because we can't put a quarter clip because we won't be able to put one there. But I'll put a toe clip there and I'll probably put an outside quarter clip. Just let's face it, normally when a foot shoots um, spins on a hind foot, it spins to the inside, that will just hold the shoe in place and give a lot more um, structural integrity to the shoe and its attachment to the foot. Okay, so, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the toe bend in. Obviously the toe bend I'm going to go for is a toe clip toe bend. What I will do is I'll put the normal symmetrical toe bend in. Once I've secured that and I'm happy with that and it's locked, I will then send the tide sniff on the medial toe. It's important to get it right because what a lot of people do, because it is an irregular shoe, they'll, they'll not get the toe bend right, they'll be irregular to the wrong amount of degree and then you can never get that back. So put a regular toe bend in, then adjust it. The principle for this shoe is pretty much the same whether you're doing it flat, concave, whether you do it out of 3.8 because it's on a riding horse or whether it's a hunter, etc. I've just gone for a bit more of a traditional hunter section here, 7.8, 7.16. No, sorry, 3 quarters 7.16, so it's nice to be nice and tall. great thing about um, with these kind of shoes, if you go for a taller section, you get a lot more definition in the forge. Clipping it, so we want a tighter toe. 
just get a nice dampy Back the toenail now. Check the knees while I want it. Look at it now, that's quite a symmetrical toe bend. Now I'm going to send it straight on from the centre dot, making sure I don't move the outside. So I'm just going to hit there. see how straight it is from that toe. One of the important things when we do make these regular shoes, be it anti-brushing shoes, side bone shoes, etc, etc, it's very important that the normal side we make first. So it's a side bone shoe, the medial branch is the normal branch. So I'll always turn the medial branch in that case first. We normally do the outside branch first, the regular branch in the inside. So we just make the rest of the shoe as normal first, okay? So, Look, put the heel on it, turn it. Remember, I'm going to put four nail holes on that outside. Okay, remember this shoe is for a hunter. So I won't be giving it a lot of width and length on the ins on the outside neither. It's nice rounded up right here.
that's just going to go through these nail holes again. Which I don't forget. Just going to go through these nail holes again. Before I do the other side, just line the shoe up. Just give it a quick measure to the outside. We know it's five and a half. Lucky dar. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to force the heel on. Remember, it's a hunter heel. I'm going to start folding that concave over, which is great because it makes the section a lot stronger. Always best to get your heel on it and your brushing edge and then start going down the rest of the branch. Otherwise it will twist. from just the other side where the toe clip's going to go. that edge right up okay so now we're going to turn it well we don't want to bend this too much because it's already coming under the foot we want to get it to the quarter bend the quarter in remember it's important we've got a nice round heel quarter because it's you know the, the heel quarter the foot's A lot of people struggle to get that radius, especially on hunter's shoes, to fit, um, follow the radius of the foot. I'll show you a trick now to help get that. So what I'm gonna do, start this going, I'm gonna hold it up there, round side of my hammer, and I'm just gonna very gently tap around to the heel quarter, lifting my hand, show it's made it nice and round. I'm gonna have to put a float into the rest of the quarter.
get a lot of people struggle to see it. What I tend to do at this point is literally bob punch the toe clip because that will give us a concise centre mark of where we're going. quarters, five and a half. Right, and the next thing I need to do, so if we look through the shoe now, imagine if we'd got a normal uniform toe, but it'd conform. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put these nail holes in at the heel quarter. Okay, again, another trick on how to do that. Don't try and mark it cold. If you try and mark it cold, it'll just fly across the forge. So, we're going to need a plain stamp. Tricky is, stab your spot punch or whatever, stick it in the round hole. Okay. Nice gentle heat, come around here, Brian. Okay, put the shoe up against. Okay, remember we're going back further than normal, but we're literally going to push it at an angle. There, do it hit. Okay, and again we're going to do it again, just a little bit behind it. There. Okay, once we've got our stamp in, again we're not going to the centre of the steel like normal. Okay, and we're only going to put a two or a three in. Okay, so we don't need a massive hole. But notice this stopped that shoe flying across the forge. Okay, for health and safety, that's obviously very important. Don't kill someone. Nails have come out, they're slightly uh, fine of the midline, which is exactly where you want them to be. Crisping the nail on top. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to pull this toe clip.
Let's have a quick look. Actually, let's get a ruler on it before we waste time looking. On the old shoe on the foot sorry are we roughly where we want to be obviously we've got remember we've got the toe clip there but you can see there where that foot's overhanging yet we're meeting the quarters that's ideally where we need to be okay right length on the heel by the time we button that clip in okay so can you get a quick rasp up now So we're rasping our hunting hills first of all.
a bit more still. Okay, then away from the toe, all the way back, taking all the lumps and bumps. Then we're fitting it to the foot so we don't need to box it, but again, just take the sharp edge off.
Tight. So we've got our four and three quarter or just over. Uh, five and a half. So if we have a look at it now. Obviously we've got a toe clip on this, so we won't be able to get it back on the foot, but if we flip it, you should be able to see it. So with this fitting the foot now, obviously that's upside down the foot, but if you note, know, we've got a bit of foot hanging over the edge there to the widest part. Okay, then the rest of it is fitted to the foot, i.e. hunter fit. This, obviously the idea behind that, if it does knock into itself, this bit of hoof, rounded off hoof, is going to do a lot less damage than the sharp border of the material. Common problem you get, and you see this a lot with people using quarter clips on hind feet, is they overhang the foot like you're supposed to, and then they bevel it off till it meets the shoe. Well, the whole idea of that piece of foot hanging over, be it between two quarter clips or at the side if it's brushing, is that if it does interfere itself, the hoof is going to do a lot less damage than the metal is. So that hoof Although you need to round off the sharp edge, that hoof does need to be overhanging, okay? That's what it's all about. If you imagine that, obviously once the clip's cut in, you can see that foot. And then you've got from the side, I don't know if I can show you, but if you imagine that from the side, none of that material there is gonna catch it and we've got that overhang we just get in the right place. We've got that overhang and it cause it plenty, plenty of protection. That's the whole idea of it. It is not an ideal shoe in the sense of, you know, the way Farrery's gone over the last 20 years, it's all about promoting support, width and length, ground reaction forces. This is the anti of all those. But again, if you've got a horse and it's interfering that much due to confirmation, or other uh, contributing factors and it's injuring itself you're gonna have to do something about it okay right so your task for this week I want to see by Monday morning a a preventer hind shoe it can be flat it can be concave it's up to yourself as long as it's functional and the shapes correct Okay, obviously that shape's going to differ from foot to foot, but what I want to see is a foot shape in there where the um, area of interference is protected. Okay, so it needs to be straight, it needs to fit under. So think of your generic foot shape. Secondly, like I said this morning, I want you to make a shoe, again, out of flat concave, I've, bearing in mind scalping tends to happen more on horses racing on turf, you're best off doing it out of concave. But I wanna see a shoe, if you had a horse which was scalping, what you perhaps would try to stop it from injuring itself. You keep still, okay? So work it out. How are you gonna stop, or how are you gonna reduce the damage the front foot going down the front of the hind fetlock's gonna do. There's different ways of doing it. You know, you might come up with something extreme, you might come up with something subtle. I just wanna see your thought process. And next week, when, once you put the pictures on on Monday, the next session on Wednesday, we'll have a brief discussion where you can defend and explain what you've done and why you've done, why you've done it. The other thing I wanna see by Monday is we talked a lot about the interference and we talked a lot about getting the front feet out of the way. Okay, so what I wanna see is a pair of concave cyclic front shoes. Okay, and then we can get those ticked off as well. The piece of advice I would give you, and it's something I do, you see a lot of students 
They put six nail holes in um, a side clip front shoe and they don't quite know whether to put the clip in front of the middle nail hole or behind it. And either way, you end up either too far forward or too far back. What I always do and what I suggest students do is if, if you stamp four and four, so eight nail holes, and put your side clip for the front shoe between the second and third nail holes. Look at all the machine made versions of that you get out there, apart from the side clip equilibriums by Mustad, which they don't fit, okay? Um, but if you look at most of the manufactured side clip shoes, you'll find that side clip between the second and third nail hole. It's where it goes, okay? You know, people got different theories on it, but as a generic shape, it's, it's round about in the right place, okay? Any questions, and I will put that task up on the Facebook group later, okay, for, for, so you've got someone to post the pictures. Um, but if there's any questions, just send me a message and we'll answer that. Any section, any size, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, any questions on any of this? Obviously the video's up there if you wanna look for it, if you missed any of it. Um, but any other questions, give us a shout. Ah, thank you.